Hey everybody, how are you? Happy Monday. I hope that your uh, week is off to a great start. I'm sure excited to be uh, hanging out with you this afternoon and doing our very last creative escape. I can't believe it's been eight weeks already, but this is our eighth one that we've been doing every Monday um, since our you know, stay at home order started and um, living life a little differently these days. But uh, hopefully you've had a great time and have been able to get a little creative outlet and stress relief from just hanging out together and doing a little bit of drawing. So I'm excited to do our last one with you. Uh, in the description, you'll find a link to this week's drawing challenge. It is the summer drawing challenge. And there's lots of fun things on that list to do. Anything from camping related to, you know, swimming and hanging out at the beach or sunglasses. But the one that I picked for us to do today is hot air balloons. Um, I've never ridden in a hot air balloon, but I think it'd be so fun. So I thought it would be just a, a great thing to draw today and something that maybe would be accessible for all of us, no matter what your art skill is. So uh, if you are up for a fun hot air balloon drawing today, grab a piece of paper for me and a pencil and we're going to get started. Okay, let me turn this around here. Uh, my camera holder is in a new spot today because it's a uh, had to kind of change the way I was working on my drawing. So bear with me a second. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Hey, by golly, it works. Look at that. All right. So there's the hot air balloon we're going to draw today. Um, if you have any questions as we're going here, feel free to type them in the chat and I'll try to check the chat um, periodically here. So I'll, hopefully I don't miss anybody's question. If I do, I'll be sure to answer it um, on, when we finish the live video. Okay. Um, but uh, do type it in there and let me know what you think or if you have questions or you're struggling with something I'd be more than happy to help you either during the live if I can catch it or uh, or afterwards either way Okay, all right Well, let me scoot this out of the way and you know feel free to um to change the colors of the hot air balloon when we get ready to start coloring today Okay, but uh, grab your colored pencils if you've got those handy set them off to the side just a little bit and we'll get to those here shortly Okay All right Set that hot air balloon out of the way. All right, well, we're going to start with the basket on our hot air balloon. And so we're going to start with just a basic diamond shape, which will be the opening of our basket. Okay, so if you've got your paper in kind of a horizontal position, you want to start towards the, oh, I'd say the bottom third of your paper. So you've got plenty of space at the top here to draw your hot air balloon. Okay, all right, so I'm going to start about right here. And again, we're just going to do a basic diamond. Okay, you can decide how big you want yours to be, but I'm going to go about like this. So again, just a, a basic diamond shape that's maybe a little bit elongated on the horizontal. Let me push a little harder so I make sure that's showing up. I'm sorry. Um, on your end of things, I would encourage you to press real lightly on this, especially if you're going to color it with some colored pencils or even some markers, because again, for those of you that have watch several of these videos you know that the graphite likes to show through the colored pencil so the lighter that you draw the less of that graphite that shows through or the less that you have to erase it also makes erasing any mistakes that you make a little easier to do it doesn't leave what we call a ghost line behind so give that a shot okay all right so if you've got your basic diamond shape now we're going to kind of flesh out our basket and make a look a little bit 3d so we're going to start from the bottom point of our diamond and we're going to draw a line just straight down okay and then we're going to do similar from the two um, sides of our diamond the two horizontal corners okay but these we're going to angle out just a little bit so we're going to start at the corner and do a slight diagonal as you come down so it kind of slants out and the baskets maybe a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top okay and we're gonna do the same thing on the left side but we're gonna you know flesh that out to the left just a little bit does that make sense so you got something looking like that okay all right so then we're gonna connect um, the bottom edges of our basket and when you do it you want the line that you draw on each side to be parallel to the top of that same side so for example here on the left I want to make sure that my line is parallel to this top line that's on the left side does that make sense okay so again to the left and then as we do this one over here on the right we're gonna make sure that our line is parallel on the right okay all right, now we're going to add just a little bit of softness to our basket before we finish this up. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina, what's your question here? Is this diamond at the bottom or the middle of the page? Um, you want it kind of towards the bottom third 
of the page so you've got room at the top to draw your balloon. So if you're worried about running out of space for your balloon at the top, go ahead and push it just a little more to the bottom because this, this basket will be the very bottom thing that we draw. Does that make sense? Let me know if not and I'll try to clarify just a little bit. But yes, you want it towards the bottom, okay? All right, so we're going to try to soften the bottom edge of our basket just a little bit by giving it some rounded corners instead of some pointed corners, okay? So here on the right side bottom edge, we're just going to curve and round that corner off a little bit, okay? We're going to do the same thing here in the middle. Instead of coming to a point, just make it a gentle curve right there. Okay, and I'm going to darken my lines a little bit. Now, you don't need to darken your lines because we don't want them to, um, to show through your colored pencil. Yeah, Tina, you're welcome. No problem. I'm glad you're hanging out with me this afternoon. This will be fun. So, okay. So then over here on the left, we're going to do the same thing. When we get to the left corner, we're going to round that corner just a little bit instead of having a pointed corner. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take my eraser and clean up those little points and get rid of those. So there we should have a rounded bottom to our basket, right? And you can kind of do the same thing with this line right here in the center that comes off of the bottom point of your diamond. Um, you can give it just a little bit of a curve to the left as it comes down if you want to, okay? Or if, you know, if that frustrates you or makes you nervous, just bring it straight down. It'll be fine, okay? All right. So we're going to soften the top edge of our basket a little bit as well. Okay, we're going to curve, start here in the center with the bottom point, and we're going to curve that just a little bit. And then as we come over to the right edge, we're going to curve this so it connects to the top edge of the basket there. And we'll fix this edge here in just a minute. Don't worry about that, okay? And then we're going to repeat that over here on the left. We're going to give it a little bit of a curve right there at the corner. And then same thing on the top, just give it a curve, soften it just a little bit. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and erase those points and get rid of those. And then we're going to put a little border on our basket that's going to help um, connect our corners and the sides of our basket to the top. Okay. So you can decide how wide of a, a border or a top hem, I don't know what you really call it on, on one of these hot air balloon baskets, but I'm going to make mine about an eighth of an inch or so. I think that's an eighth of an inch. Maybe it's a quarter. I don't know. I'm bad with measurements. <laughs> so, hey man, whatever. Just uh, about this thick, and we're going to echo the top edge of our basket. And then when we get over here to the right hand side, we're going to curve up and connect to the top of the basket, like so. Okay. Follow this edge, and right here at the corner, we're going to curve. Again, just echoing the top curve of our basket. And then we're going to make our line parallel to the top left edge. And again, when we get over here to the side, we're going to curve up and connect with the top of the basket. Kind of like so. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing here in the inside of the basket. Okay, so we're going to come down from the top left side here, the same distance that you did on the other edges of your basket. You're going to echo this line so you want it to be parallel. On the bottom left corner, you're going to just run straight into the the front edge of the basket okay so just keep that line straight and when you hit the front edge of the basket just stop drawing okay and then we're going to work up and to the right when we get to the top corner we're going to repeat that curve and then we're going to be parallel to the top right edge of the basket again and there again we're just going to continue that line straight until we hit the front opening of the basket okay hopefully that makes sense and then if you want, from the top corner of your diamond, you can do a line straight down that will help accentuate the three-dimensionality of the basket. It'll make it look a little more 3D. Okay? And it can even connect to um, that, that first line that we did off the bottom corner of our diamond. Does that make a little bit of sense? So... Uh, Hopefully, that's starting to look like the basket of a hot air balloon there. And then we're going to get ready to draw the top of our hot air balloon. Okay. 
So I would say about a quarter of an inch or so above the top corner of your basket opening, we're gonna start our hot air balloon. So maybe give yourself a little reference point. Okay, and we're gonna do a curved bottom on our balloon, just a gentle curve, about as wide as the diamond shape that's the opening of our basket. So roughly like that, okay? And then we're going to give ourselves a reference point at the top for how tall do you want your hot air balloon to be. So I'm going to put mine about this tall. Okay, you can decide how big you want yours to be. Entirely up to you, but just give yourself a little reference point up there. I always like to have that so I know where I'm shooting for when I draw. Okay, and maybe something else works different for you and that's all right. Okay, so from the side of the, uh, the bottom edge of our hot air balloon here, we're going to start to make our balloon shape. So we're going to come up and to the left just a little bit. We're going to slant. And then we're going to push this out in the shape of a balloon or even like a, a light bulb shape. Maybe you can think about it like that, like a traditional light bulb. Okay, so we're going to push it out and to the left. And then we're going to start to bring it around and curve towards the top. And you're going to flatten out on the top a little bit. And then we're going to try to do a mirror image of that shape on the right hand side. Okay. And you can do that working from the top down or you can come from the bottom and work your way towards the top. Sometimes I like to do a little bit of both, but you decide what works best for you. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to slant up into the right like I did up into the left over here on the left half. Right. And then we're going to push that out. echo or mirror image the shape that we did on the left and repeat that over here on the right okay and again if you don't get it quite right the first time that's okay just grab your eraser you know erase what you don't like and give it another shot like mine <laughs> is not a good mirror image so <laughs> push it up and just adjust a little bit and i'm going to adjust first and then i'll erase what i don't need Okay, perfectly fine. That's why they invented erasers. And again, as we're drawing today, just give yourself permission to have fun and try not to stress too much about whether or not you're drawing perfectly. Have a good time. Okay. All right, so what do we think? Does that look kind of like a balloon shape? Hopefully. Some industrious person is outside mowing their yard. Hopefully you're not picking up too much of that lawnmower nose noise. Sorry about that. Okay. So I think we're ready to start putting some designs on our balloon. What do you think? All right. So across the bottom here, uh, we're going to do a little border at the base of our balloon. Okay. So where this edge starts to turn out more sharply, we're going to connect those two points with a curved line similar to what we did on the bottom. So we're just going to curve across here, okay? And if you want to adjust the base shape of your balloon, feel free to do that. You know, you can certainly adjust anytime you want to, okay? All right, so then we're going to go ahead and put the ridges in our balloon. Um, we're going to try to start in the middle. So if you give yourself a little reference point here at what you think is the center of the balloon, we're going to try to draw two lines equally spaced apart from that center reference Makes sense. Okay. So let me just kind of demonstrate here and then maybe that'll make a little bit more sense. So from this center point, we're going to start out to the left just a little bit and we're going to do a curved line that roughly echoes the shape of our balloon, but it's gonna be a little more flat, okay? So it's gonna bow out in the center, out and to the left, and then we're gonna bring it towards the center as we come to the bottom. And this is gonna help make our balloon look more curved and three-dimensional. So something along those lines, okay? And then we're gonna do an image of that on the right. So we're gonna come out from our center point, roughly the same distance that we did on the left, and we're going to try, try to so push it out to the right about as much as you pushed it out to the left on the other side and then we're going to bring it back. 
Okay, and you'll notice I do kind of a sketched line just to make sure I'm in the right spot. If that's something that you think might work for you, give it a shot. If not, do what works for you. That's one of the great things about art is there's more than one way to get the right answer, so to speak. Okay, and we all as artists kind of have our own things that work best for us and that's perfectly All right, give you a second to catch up there and Then we'll do our extra ridges and more stripes, okay? okay so on the left, we're going to add another stripe about halfway between these two lines between the outer line of our balloon and that first stripe that we did Okay so start up at the top and so it connects with that very first stripe that you made and we're just going to push out to the left and the middle of the space that we have left okay and again we'll bring it down here to a point so roughly roughly like that okay and then we're going to do the same thing on the right hand side. Start about where the uh, the right edge of your first stripe started and then we're going to divide the space on the right in half. Roughly speaking again it doesn't have to be perfect. So kind of like and hopefully you've got something that looks kind of like a balloon. What do you think? All right. When we color, um, we're going to put the um, the strings or the ropes in that will connect the basket to the balloon. But for now, we're just going to leave them out so we don't confuse ourselves and kind of they keep them out of our way for a little bit. I can clean up some of these reference points that I don't need and these lines here. Um, when you finish sketching your balloon, it would be a to go back through and lighten up any lines that might be a little too dark again if you're going to color in colored pencil you want to try to have your graphite lines be, be as possible so oftentimes uh, my art students or you know if i'm just working on a, a rough sketch at home i'll try to erase my pencil lines so that i can just barely see them so kind of I don't know if that even shows up for you very well, but there's a really faint pencil line right here that I can see. Okay, so ideally that's what you'd want on your end. I'm going to leave mine dark so that you can see what I'm drawing better. Okay, so just keep in mind that my graphite lines are going to show through the colored pencil quite a bit, um, and it will affect the color that you see um, through the video. So yours will look different, hopefully, and yours would be the ideal that we're going for because we don't want that uh, graphite to peek through, yeah? Okay, so we're going to start with the basket. So what I'd love for you to do with the basket is grab a couple of shades of brown. Now, I'm working with Crayola. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina. I keep freezing up. Well, shoot. I don't know if it's yours or mine. You know, the Wi-Fi here in town can be a little spotty sometimes, too. So I'm sorry about that. Um, feel free to type in any questions if we miss something. Um, or I'll post the replay on my website um, later tonight so you can maybe go back and catch that if you miss something too, okay? But for the basket, we're going to grab two different shades of brown. Again, I'm working with um, Crayolas just to show you that this process can be used with any grade of colored pencil. If you've got something better, Tina, I know you've got the Prismacolor, so, you know, grab grab something similar if you can. But I've got just a, what's called a regular brown here and a dark brown. So if you want to grab a couple of shades of brown. And then you're also going to want to grab a violet or a purple. That's what I've got, okay? And the purple we're going to use to just add some interest to our brown as well as to help uh, punch up our shadows just a little bit, okay? All right. So for our basket, we're going to put just a, a light layer of regular brown down to start with, okay? Now, if you're someone who wants more rich color you're going to want to work in lighter layers than i'm going to today if you're someone who wants more color down you're going to push a little harder as we do our layers today okay so if you're someone who's going to want to do fewer layers 
uh, you're going to start with a pressure of about a five or a six on a 10 scale with our first colored pencil here. Okay, and that's going to be kind of what I do here. All right, so we're going to start with the bottom of the basket here. We're going to use tiny circles that overlap. And again, we're pressing, excuse me, pressing with about a four or a five or a six pressure on a 10 scale. So if 10 is the hardest that you can possibly push, you want to be about half that pressure with this first layer. Okay. Now, if you're someone who wants a richer color and you're willing to put more layers of color down, ease up a little bit and try to do a three or a four. Okay. So we'll just take a minute and fill in our basket with a basic layer of brown to start with. Uh, this is the regular brown tina, so it would be the lighter brown. Good question. And you might be mindful of the surface you're working on too. As I'm coloring here, I'm noticing the wood grain of my drawing desk is showing through the um, colored pencil layers. Doesn't really bother me when I'm working on a drawing like this, but it might be something that, um, that you notice. So if you're getting a funny texture through your paper, it might be a result of the surface you're working on. Um, you can alleviate that if you want to by stacking a few other pieces of paper underneath the one you're working on. And that'll just create a little cushion for you and alleviate some of that texture. If it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it and just continue on, okay? We're gonna go ahead and put this layer of brown on our little um, top edge of our basket, our molding, so to speak. I wish I knew what that was called on a basket. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the inside as well. Now, if you're starting to lose your pencil lines and you're not quite sure where the edges of your basket are supposed to be, you can take that darker brown color that I had you grab and outline your graphite lines with that darker brown. Just draw right over the top of them, trace them so that you don't lose your graphite lines or the, uh, the edges of your basket, so to speak. Okay. Okay. So, oops, uh, so next we're going to grab um, the dark brown and do a layer of dark brown right on top of this layer of regular brown. Um, we're going to use about a four or a five pressure with that and we're going to do that same pressure through the whole basket again and then we're going to start adding some shadows um, with the darker brown and with our purple. Okay. So you can start anywhere you want to start. And again, if you're going to lose your edges of your basket, maybe trace those with your dark brown first before you do this and push just a smidge harder. As we don't want to lose those basket edges that you worked so hard on. Again, nice tiny circles that overlap so you get that nice even layer of color as you're working there and you avoid any streaks of any kind. Okay, so now with the dark brown, we're going to start to add a little bit of shadow and dimension to help our basket look more 3D so you can really tell where the inside of the basket is and where the outside of the basket is, okay? Start with the interior of the basket first. 
and on the um, the right, or I'm sorry, the left corner of the inside of our basket, we're going to take the point of our dark brown, and we're going to go over this and push a little harder, like a five or a six, and we're going to echo the inside edge of the basket right here. So right underneath that molding piece, we're going to create a good strong shadow there, and we're going to carry that shadow along the opening of the basket and then towards the the middle center and you can ease up just a little bit as you come towards the middle center okay so we're going to put the strongest shadow right underneath the top molding here of the basket and the inside so right along these two lines here is where you want that strongest shadow to be and then it's going to fade a little bit as it comes out okay now don't completely fill in the surface of your paper yet Okay, I'm sorry, Tina, it's very blurry. You can't tell what I'm doing. All right, let me pull it towards the camera just a little bit and see if this helps. Okay, so hopefully that's showing up better for you right here. Along this edge of the basket here and the top edge here, strong shadow there, and we're going to let it fade as it comes out. We're using our darker brown pencil to do that with about a five or a six pressure. Can you see that better now? Maybe give me a thumbs up or something if you don't want to type. Yeah, better. Okay, good deal. All right. So then we're going to do the same thing with that shadow over here on the left. So we're going to create a strong shadow underneath this top molding edge and along the top edge and let it fade towards the center just a little bit. So that's the next step I'm going to do. Okay, let me push this back out and tape it back down and then we'll do that. Okay, so again, a five or a six pressure with the point of your dark brown, and we're going to go along the top edge of the molding piece here, and then the top of the opening of the basket on the right side. So a little darker in those areas, and then you're going to ease up pressure a little bit and let it gently fade towards the middle of the basket. Okay, and we'll reinforce that with our purple here and another layer of dark brown in just a little bit. So leave a little room in your paper. Don't completely fill in the tooth of the paper yet. You know, the part that grabs the colored pencil. Okay. And I'm just going to darken my edge just a little bit here. Clean it up while I give you a second to catch up. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab the example that I did earlier today and show you the next do here so let me pull this a little closer here hopefully this will give it a second to focus okay so the next area where we're going to add a shadow is going to be underneath the front of the molding here and we're going to push a little harder on the right or i'm sorry the left edge of the basket there so right underneath the molding will be darker down this center edge will be darker on both sides of that center line and then we're going to do a shadow under the molding here on the right side as well Okay, so that's the next step, and then we'll do the inside molding here in just a little bit. Okay, so let me set that off to the side. Okay, so on the front part of the basket, then, is where we're going to focus next, and we're going to put a shadow with our dark brown underneath the molding piece here. Again, about a four or five pressure there. We're going to carry that shadow down the left edge of the basket just a little bit and then we're going to let it fade towards the center. So just carry that shadow in but ease up the pressure a little bit if you can. Okay, and then we're going to carry that shadow down the center line. And again, let that fade towards the center a little bit. So ease up on the pressure and just let it fade out. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that on the right hand side. We're going to do shadow underneath the molding again. Carry it down the center line. And then carry it down the right edge. And then work your way around and fade it towards the center. Okay, so just extend your shadow a little bit, fading it towards the center, and just let it kind of dissipate.
Okay. So something like that. Let me grab it and pull it closer to the camera so I can make sure that you can see that really well. And give it a second to focus. So something along those lines. And hopefully your basket's starting to look a little bit three-dimensional now. Okay. Let me push it back out and tape it down. Okay. So next we're going to do a little bit of a shadow on the molding part inside of the basket. Let me grab the example here again. So we're going to work, let it focus right in here. And we're going to put a shadow on the inside left corner and let it fade to the center. And we'll do the same thing over here on the right. So a shadow here on the right and we'll let it fade to the center. Okay. Set that off to the side. Let's start on the left. So we're going to go in the inside corner of our molding here and we're going to make it darker right next to the edge. And then we're going to ease up the pressure and let it fade just a little bit. Now this does not need to be as dark as the center inside of your basket. So where the people would stand, it doesn't need to be quite as dark as down there if you don't want it to be. Um, if you already started with the same pressure, that's okay. Not a problem. Okay. And then just let it fade. guess I must have dropped it at some point because that lid just popped right out. <laughs> okay, so with this purple, we're going to put a light layer of it over the whole basket to create just some interest in there. I know, I'm sorry, you lost me. My, uh, my internet connection is being poopy. So can you hear me now? It reminds me of that old Veri Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Somebody hit the hit the like button for me or give me a yes. Let me know you're out there and I'm reconnected with you maybe. Okay. Hopefully you're there and we're still recording. If not, I don't know. <laughs> Technology, I tell you. Dead gimmick. All right. Tina, are you out there? Can you give me a thumbs up or a yes or something? Okay, well, hopefully we're, we're still connected here. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a layer of purple on our basket. Okay, good. Oh, thank you for typing there. Well, not your fault. It's my fault. Um, it's, well, it's internet in town. Um, I got a notification that my internet signal was really weak, so I apologize for that technology. What are you going to do? But we'll just, uh, we'll carry on here, okay? So grab that purple colored pencil, and we're going to do a layer over the whole basket lightly. So we're going to do like a two or a three pressure on this. We're going to use the side of our pencil and hold it towards the back so that you're not able to physically able to push quite as hard with it, okay? That's one of the tricks I use when I want to make sure I don't get too carried away pushing on a, on a color of pencil that I'm using just for an accent color rather than um, the main color, okay? So, just a light layer over the whole basket here with our purple. And then anywhere we put those shadows just a minute ago, you can push just a little harder with your purple or um, use the point of the pencil and maybe do an extra layer of purple in those spots and that'll just help um, create a little more contrast between your shadow and the main edges of the basket on our hot air balloon. Okay. So we'll do the same thing over here on the right. And again, I'm going to push a little harder or add just a little extra on top of the areas where we had our shadow. And we'll let that fade towards the center again. Light layer over this molding piece. And 
and then we'll hop towards the inside of the basket here as well. So a little darker on the shadow, so a little extra purple on the shadow parts. And then ease up as you come toward the center of the basket. And again, we'll push a little harder over here on the right where the shadows are. And ease up towards the center of the basket there too. Okay. And again, same thing on the molding on the inside of the basket, a little darker on the shadow areas with the purple. And ease up as you work towards the top point, okay? And hopefully you're seeing a little purple show through on your brown, but not enough that you're creating a purple basket. I mean, I guess if you create a purple basket, that's okay too, because, you know, nothing saying you can't have purple hot air balloon baskets, right? It's possible. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab my two shades of brown again, and I'm gonna grab the example I did earlier today. And we're gonna use these two browns in some slightly different areas. Okay, so let me pull this a little closer here. All right, so on the front of the basket here, and on the front molding, and on the inside molding, we're gonna use the lighter brown and then here on the very center of the basket, we're going to use our dark brown to help accentuate that that's the inside where people stand and it's a little bit more in the shadow there. Okay, so let's start with the dark brown and we'll do the inside of the basket first and then everything else you'll get to use the lighter brown on. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to grab the dark brown. We're going to use the tip of our pencil and we're going to push hard and try to fill in the white spaces in the color right here with our dark brown. Okay. Now, in richer color, you can ease up and just add more layers of color, not press as hard with each one, and just continue to alternate your browns and maybe a touch of purple in some. But if you're ready to kind of finish up your basket and you want more instant results like I'm doing here, we're gonna push a little harder and try to fill in all the white spaces of our paper at this point, okay? So we'll do the dark brown just here in the very center of the basket. Okay. And then we're going to grab our regular brown or the lighter brown that you chose. And we're going to use it on all of the other parts of the basket. Okay. Again, we're going to use the tip. We're going to push firmly. Tiny circles still that overlap. But you're going to push. You get some nice good bold color and starts to fill in the white spaces of your paper. If that doesn't make sense, somebody let me know and I'll try to clarify. Now, as we're filling in color here, just a side note, um, whenever you work with brown, you can add just about any color you want to to it for your accent color to make it more interesting to look at. I chose purple today because we're going to use some purple in the top part of the balloon and I just thought it would be easier to carry that tone through the whole drawing. As I said, any color you want to to brown because brown you can make with about any color in the color wheel or on the rainbow. So brown is typically made when you mix complementary colors together. And complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. So red and green, for example, are complementary colors. And when you mix yellow and purple are another set that will do that. And orange and blue is another set that will do that. Okay. So again, I just chose purple today because we're going to use some purple in the colors of the hot air balloon itself. So I thought it would just tie together nicely. But you could have done a yellow in here. You could do both yellow and purple in here. Uh, if you wanted more of a reddish brown, you could have added red. So lots of options when you're working with brown. Okay, I'm going to move the outside molding next. And again, I'm doing the same amount of Still tiny circles that overlap.
Sorry about our internet struggles today. It's a bright sunny day here in Concordia. You'd think the internet would work great, but I don't know. Technology. I don't understand it, but I'm thankful for it. So, okay, we'll do the inside molding here next. And hopefully that inside molding will have a, um, a darker shade to it than the outside does if we did our job right because we put extra shadow there. And that's, again, going to help accentuate um, that it's the inside of the basket and maybe not exposed to quite as much light as the outside of the basket is. Okay. All right. There we go. So the last thing I'm going to do with our, that dark brown, and I'm going to trace the pencil lines that we had done earlier to just kind of clean up the edges and help define it a bit more. Uh, and I'm going to push pretty firmly when I do that so that those lines show up. And I'm going to kind of scrub back and forth a little bit and just clean up the edges. So think of it as outlining again if you want to, I guess. Would also. <laughs> Tina, do you have a blob? <laughs> You'd have a blob too for you. This brown blob on our papers. <laughs> All right, so we'll just again trace the pencil lines on your hot air balloon basket. Define the edges just a little bit more, and then we'll move to the top and start do some coloring up there. Put a little curl on the bottom of that line, help our basket look. And if your pencil outlining starts to get a little chunkier and softer than you'd like, just sharpen your pencil again. Okay, the more you use it, the more blunt that pencil gets, and then your pencil line gets a little wider and less sharp. So, off the edge of our balloon. Okay, and then we're going to do one from each corner of the basket. So, one from the right corner, and just angle it up so it's going to touch kind of the edge of the balloon here. And then we'll do the same thing on the left. Hopefully, you're still with me. Um, we're going to take a look at the top of the hot air balloon again than the example that I did earlier today. So I alternated colors with stripes here. Now you might want to do something different with yours, entirely up to you. But if you're wanting to do look kind of like I did with a magenta and a turquoisey color here, you're going to want to grab those two shades of um, colored pencil. So in the Crayola brand, I've got one that's a magenta. And then I've got one that says um, turquoise on it. Let me grab those and spread them out for you a little bit. So hopefully that'll focus for you there's the colors that you're looking for something along those lines so kind of a hot pink type color and a turquoisey blue or an aqua whatever makes you happy okay and then the accent color that we're going to use for that is the purple that we used on the basket so for me that one is a violet purple okay all right so i'm gonna set this off to the side again and i'm going to start with the uh the magenta color and we're going to do um those stripes first okay so for me on the example that I did that's going to be the center stripe here and then the two outside stripes okay so we're going to do um, a medium pressure layer of color on all of those areas to start with I'm going to start on the left and work my way to the right because I'm right-handed um, it's easier to do that and it, and it alleviates any smudging of color that you might do I'm using the point of the pencil, still doing tiny circles and doing about a five or a six pressure roughly on a 10 scale. Okay, so again, if 10 is the hardest that you can push, you want to do about half that with this layer. Okay, now if you're someone who wants more layers and richer color, again, you want to press lighter than a five. So I would suggest a two or a three. Okay, and you'll just do more layers of color to make it more rich and interesting to look at. Okay, so we'll just do this over the left stripe to start with. Now, if you are a left-handed person, you might want to start on the right and work your way across that way. I 
Again, strive for an even layer of color here. Now when you finish the left stripe, go ahead and do the one in the center. Again, tiny circles, overlap them so you don't get streaky color. And while I try to work um, even left to right when I'm doing just one stripe itself, you'll notice that I try to not do an even edge across the bottom. I kind of wiggle it around a little bit, and so hopefully that helps to alleviate any um, streaky color that you might get as well from overlapping layers. Or it maybe won't be quite as obvious where you overlapped a little bit, if that makes some sense. Okay, I'm going to make my circles just a little bigger, try to do this just a little bit faster here. And as your pencil gets a little more dull or blunt, feel free to rotate it so you're using a sharper corner again. That'll help you get more color on the paper. Uh, or just take a second and sharpen your pencil too. Okay. Right, and then we're going to do the right stripe. Oops, a little eraser chunk right there, kind of messed up my color. Oh well. All right, we'll see if maybe we can get it to blend in as we work here a little bit more. All right, so there is one layer of that magenta color. And we're gonna do things just a tiny bit differently today than we normally do. Because we're gonna use purple as our accent color for both the, the magenta and the turquoise. We're going to go ahead and put a layer of turquoise down first, and then we can do our purple over the whole balloon, okay, in one shot. Maybe save a little bit of time and picking up extra pencils here, okay? So go ahead and grab that turquoise color when you're ready, and we're going to go ahead and put a layer of turquoise in our other two stripes here, as well as on the bottom edge of our balloon, okay? Again, we're going to use that five or six pressure like we were doing before, Unless you're wanting more layers, if you want to do more layers and richer color, then you ease up on the pressure on your end, okay? Again, tiny circles. Shoot for that even color layer or application so nothing's too streaky. I'm starting on the left again so that I keep my hand out of the way and try not to smudge too much color. And that's one of the reasons you'll see when I'm working on my enduring roots drawings of flowers um, and Celtic crosses that I will wear a cotton glove. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One, it helps to alleviate the smearing of color. Now, it doesn't completely get rid of it, um, but it does help. It also keeps the um, acids in my skin from deteriorating the paper at all. So 
If you see me doing a video of that and you're wondering, well, why on earth is she wearing a glove? Well, that's why. So. Just trying to help those drawings last a little longer, I suppose, and, and keep things from smudging or discoloring. So. All right, so again, just a medium layer of blue on both of these empty stripes and across the bottom, and then we're going to hit it with some purple to just add an accent color in there and make our, make our, uh, make our color in our balloon more interesting to look at. Okay, we're also going to use that purple to help add some shadow tones in here, so... If you find that your color happens to get a little bit streaky, um, you can always go find the areas that are a little bit lighter and add just a little extra color to those to help even things out just a little bit. Um, obviously, if you've got areas that are darker than others, you don't want to put a layer of color on top of the darker areas until you kind of get things evened out just a little bit. So just be mindful of that. There's maybe a way to problem solve a little bit if you need to. All right, so we're going to hit this bottom edge of our balloon with the layer of blue and then we'll be ready to do some purple. Okay. So now I'm going to grab that same violet color that I had earlier and we're going to do a layer of violet lightly on the entire balloon, but then we're also going to use a, a little extra violet to add some shadow layers. And we're going to do those shadow layers um, on the, uh, I guess you would say the center edge of each of our stripes. Okay, so let me explain. On this left stripe with our magenta, we're going to put a little shadow right here on the right edge that's closest to the center. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this blue stripe. So again, this center edge or the one on the right that's closest to the center is going to have a little bit of a shadow on it here. Okay, the very middle stripe, we're going to do a shadow on both edges. So on the left edge and the right edge. Okay, and now as we move our way to the right side of the balloon, our shadow side is going to switch. And again, it's going to be the side that's closest to the center. Okay, so on the blue stripe, it will be the left edge here. On the magenta stripe, it will also be the left edge here, okay? And then when we do this bottom stripe of um, turquoise, we're going to do a little bit of shadow on both the left and the right, okay? So I'll walk you through that again as we get to each stripe, but just so you kind of know where we're headed, that's the idea, okay? So I'm going to start on the left with our left magenta stripe. Again, I'm going to grab towards the back of the pencil, okay, and try to use the side of the pencil a little bit. We're going to do a light layer of purple, so we're going to press like about a 2 or a 3 on a 10 scale, so ease up the pressure quite a bit. Think about it as almost whispering the color onto the paper. Okay, and we're going to do a layer of purple over the whole stripe. And then when we get that done, I'm going to walk you through the shadow, okay? And again, the shadow is going to be there to just help create some interest and dimension, help us uh, make our hot air balloon look like it's got some ridges in it and it's more three-dimensional instead of flat, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And again, the purple's here to just help add some interest. We don't want to really change the overall color of our stripes. We're just going to punch it up a little bit, make it a little more rich, okay? All right, so to do the shadow area, I'm going to grab more towards the tip of the pencil. Not all the way at the tip, but a little bit more at the tip, kind of in the middle. I'm going to use the point of the pencil, and I'm going to do an extra layer of purple right next to the right edge where it touches the blue. And I'm just going to follow that edge all the way up. And I'm doing maybe... Uh, a three to maybe a four, you know, three, three and a half pressure here. You don't want anything too dark or you're going to create a purple outline. Okay, we just want to make this color a little darker. Okay. 
All right, so once I reach the top, come back and work my way down, but I'm gonna go just to the left of that line that we did, and I'm gonna ease up the pressure there and do like a two to two and a half pressure there right next to the first line that I did. And what that's gonna do is just help to fade your shadow from the right to the left so that it fades out as it works its way to the center of that stripe, okay? Okay, and then if you need to, if you feel like you're a little too stark, you can still add a little bit extra to the left of that line that you just did and just help fade that color a little bit more towards the center. And again, you're gonna ease up the pressure when you do that, okay? So hopefully you can see on yours that it's like lighter pink at the outside edge on the left and it gradually fades to a little darker with the purple as you reach the edge of the turquoise stripe. Okay, let me grab it and pull it a little closer to the, um, the camera so maybe you can see a little bit better there. Let it... Hopefully that shows up on your end. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the same thing then with the turquoise stripe that's on the left. We're going to put a layer of purple over the whole thing. And then we're going to do the shadow the exact same way as we did there with the magenta one. Okay, so again, grab towards the back of your pencil side of the pencil so the lead's more parallel to the paper rather than perpendicular to the paper and about a two or a three pressure with your pencil tiny circles overlap and just whisper that purple on top of the blue to add some interest Okay, my purple is getting a little bit splotchy. I think it's picking up some texture from the drawing table I'm working on, but that's all right. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the shadow here. I'm going to grab the point of the pencil again. I'm going to do a shadow along the edge where it meets the turquoise stripe on the bottom. And then we're going to go up the right hand edge of our blue where it touches the magenta. We're going to do a you know, a three to three and a half pressure on our pencil, tiny circles, and just go right next to that graphite line or the edge where it meets the um, and work your way all the way to the top. And then we're going to work our way back down. We're going to ease up the pressure and the left of that shadow line we just added. Okay. And again, we're going to ease up the pressure working to create a fade so that the shadow is darkest, closest to the magenta stripe on the right, in the center, yeah, and then in, the pressure eases up and the shadow starts to fade as it moves towards the center of this blue stripe that we're working on. Hopefully that makes sense and isn't too confusing. Okay. All right, let me pull that towards the camera so hopefully you can see just a little bit better. Hopefully that shows up on your end. Okay. All right. So with our center magenta stripe, we're going to have a shadow at both the left and the right edges, and it's going to be lighter in the center. Okay. But again, we're going to put a layer of purple over the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to sharpen my pencil just a little bit here. All right. So purple over the whole thing. Here we go. Again, we're using the side of our pencil, tiny circles that overlap. And think about it, especially if you're struggling, just think about it like you're trying to whisper this color on. Put too much pressure on the back of your pencil at all. Just kind of let it glide over the surface. If it's not picking up any pencil, like any purple when you do that, then you can start to add a little bit of pressure on the back end of your pencil if you want to, so you get a little hint of purple to show up. 
Um, think about it that way if you're struggling a little bit with too much color. See if that helps. Oh, Tina, sorry, I just saw your message. Okay, sounds Thanks for the heads up there. Sorry, it's taken a little longer today. Our uh, spotty internet and then just a bigger surface area to cover takes a little longer to do. So, yeah, feel free to pop in and out as you need. So then we're going to go ahead and do our shadow layers. So I'm going to do the one on the left first. It's going to be the edge that touches that blue stripe. So again, point of the pencil, about a three, three and a half pressure. Tiny circles, fairly skinny line all the way up. And I'm rotating my pencil a little bit to find the sharp corners because my paper is getting a little bit on the full side so it doesn't want to grab quite as much so okay so now that we've got that darker shadow here on the left we're going to do a lighter layer to the right of it ease up the pressure a little bit and just help create a fade effect towards the center of the stripe And then we will do the same thing on the right edge. Okay, so again, here where it meets the right turquoise stripe, we're going to do a darker shadow layer right on top of that edge or that graphite line. And then we're going to go just to the right of that, ease up the pressure, and create that fade with our shadow. Now, if you need to do more of a fade, like if you got a little bit too dark, you can always add a third section just to the right edge of this area that we're doing now and ease up the pressure even more with your purple. Create that fade. Okay, can do the same thing. Dark on the left, not a problem. Okay. All right. So we're going to repeat that same process with our second blue stripe. Again, the shadow is going to go to the left now on this one. Okay. So a light layer of purple over the whole thing. Okay, and then we'll do our shadow layer. Again, it goes on the left edge of this stripe, the one closest to the center is what we're doing here. Point of the pencil, three to three and a half pressure, and just a skinny little shadow right on top of that graphite line or right next to the edge where it meets the uh, center magenta stripe. And then we're going to put another shadow edge just to the right of that one that we just put down and it's going to be lighter so we create that fade working towards the center of this blue stripe now so this shadow lightens up as it goes to the right it's the exact opposite of the one we did on the other side of the balloon okay all right and our last magenta stripe here we'll do a layer of purple over the whole thing again and then it will also have a little shadow tone on the left edge of this stripe, the one closest to the center.
Okay, so there's our light layer of purple. So now we're going to do the shadow again stripe where it touches the turquoise. Oops, I'm pushing a little hard there. I better ease up the pressure. So again, about a three, three and a half pressure. Skinny shadow that works on the edge of this stripe where it touches the turquoise stripe. And then we're going to put a lighter layer just to the right of it to help that shadow fade away. So hopefully we're getting gradual changes here that ease us into the shadow rather than being a little outline if that makes sense okay as i said i got a little heavy-handed with my purple there but thing with the turquoise stripe on the bottom here we're going to put a layer of purple over the whole thing and then we're going to put a shadow both at the left edge and the right edge of this stripe just around it of purple extra layer of purple on the right the far right one on the far left and then we're going to do a layer next to it that's a little bit lighter so on the left side we'll do a lighter layer just to the right of that shadow right side a layer just to the left of the shadow that's a little bit lighter again working to create that fade effect so it's dark at the outside edges starts to fade away as it works towards the center kind of like that okay our last step then is to take our, our put a good heavy layer of those colors on top of our stripes to just kind of finish out our balloon and punch it up a little bit oh boogers my lead fell out of my mouth. so and then if you wanted to do any outlining on your hot air balloon you certainly can but this will be kind of the Pencil sharpened. Goodness sakes. Let's see how we do. So, pencil, we're going to use the point. We're going to press like a six, seven, or an eight. You know, don't press so hard that you're hurting, but press hard enough that you go ahead and fill in your color and get a nice bold pop of color there. Again, if you're wanting richer color and more layers, you can do you layering your colors your purple and your magenta kind of alternate there okay Fine. and we'll just fill this in here My lead's trying to fall out. So one thing about colored pencils is they're pretty fragile. So anytime you drop them, the lead on the inside tends to fall out, fall out when you're sharpening. So all right, so I'm going to go ahead and work on the center stripe here again, pushing pretty firmly, trying to get that color filled in and a nice pop of color, nice bold magenta color. I always love bright colors. They're so cheerful and fun. Help brighten my day. Hopefully they do yours too. Well, I'm going to have to try to sharpen this guy again, I guess. It lead fell out again. Dag nab it. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, come on. There we go. Try that. Not fabulous, but got a little point to it. We'll see how far we.
Oops, I'm getting a little streaky. Yes, I'm rushing a little too much. Okay, one more stripe to do with the magenta. Switch to the turquoise. That rattle you might have just heard is Meg hopping up on the art desk. So I... <laughs> they make such good studio assistants, you know. So switch to the turquoise then as soon as you finish up your uh, magenta stripe. And we'll do the same thing with the turquoise. We'll just, you know, seven, eight, nine pressure. Um, not so hard that you hurt your hands because we don't want you, you know, in pain by any means. You can always just add more layers of color if you need to. But we'll do the tiny circles and give their turquoise stripes a nice pop of turquoise here. And hopefully they'll be as bold and bright as the magenta and kind of match that give you a fun colorful hot air balloon to look at and again as your pencil starts to get dull if you sharpen it up a little bit it'll help you get uh, more color onto your paper as it works it down into the tooth of the paper a little bit better. So if that's uh, giving you fits, that's a way you can kind of solve that problem. And catch the bottom turquoise stripe here. All right, and that pretty well does it for us in our hot air balloon. Now, if you wanted to and you want your edges to be a little cleaner or a little more defined, you could take your dark purple or your uh, maybe a black colored pencil and outline your ridges just a little bit. Um, let's see if I take a dark purple here and just kind of go over my graphite lines. It just kind of helps clean up those stripes a little bit and give them just a little bit more of a, of a punch and a little bit more definition, which sometimes can be really nice. You can also do that on the outside edge of your balloon with either your magenta pencil or your purple pencil. Okay, whichever you like the look of, you know, doing it with a purple is gonna create kind of a purple stripe there. So just be mindful of that, okay. Um, or again, if you if you would like a bolder outline, you can certainly take a black colored pencil and outline all the parts of your hot air balloon if you want to, including the basket. If you're looking for a little bit more definition there. Okay, I'm going to do just a little bit across the bottom here. Okay, so there kind of is the, uh, there's our hot air balloon, yeah? All right, so I'm going to back out take you out of the holder and turn you around here just a second. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed all the creative escapes that we've done. Uh, I've sure enjoyed hanging out with you.
my hand out of your way. Uh, enjoyed hanging out with you the last eight weeks. I can't believe it's been eight weeks already. The time really just flew. So um, hopefully this has been a, a good benefit to you all, uh, giving you some creative outlets and some fun things to do. If you're looking for more to do over the next few weeks and months ahead, you can always revisit um, all of the creative escapes that we've done and the drawing challenge. You can find those at GinaKern.com backslash latest and all the different drawing challenges are there. If you happen to miss one, the videos of each Facebook Live that we did are there. So you're welcome to use those as much or as often as you need and have time to us on the replay and you're someone that's not real familiar with my work if you'd like to learn more about that um, you're welcome to join our enduring roots insiders group um, there's a sign up form at the bottom of each blog post um, so feel free to do that thanks Tina so glad you could join us I'm glad you're almost done yeah feel free to pop back on and catch the uh, the tail end if you want to um, so again guys I sure have enjoyed hanging out with if you feel free to poke around my website and check things out, post any comments or questions that you have. I'm more than happy to help any time that I can. Um, and I just wish you all all the best. So take care. Thanks again for joining me. Be well, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.